I'm happy to start off section one of Student Athlete Voices, um, a new session that, that we are doing to give student athletes um, a platform to talk about kind of what's going on now with um, just the racial inequalities, um, the protests that have been going on, the kind of uh, police brutality and, and, and all these other issues that are affecting, you know, the world, but um, but also our student athletes. So, um, you know, my name is Nico Roberts, uh, coordinator for men's basketball championships, um, and I'm happy to have uh, two current student athletes to talk to today. Um, so we first have uh, Malachi Rice from Indianapolis, Indiana, a uh, guard at Georgia Tech. We also have Gable Stevenson uh, from Apple Valley, Minnesota, who goes to the University of Minnesota as a wrestler down there. Um, so I'm happy to have you guys here. How are you guys doing? I guess we'll go one at a time. So Malachi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good, good. How about you, Gable? I'm doing great, too. Thank you for having both of us, of course. Absolutely. So um, before we kind of get into the topic at hand, I just kind of want to see how you guys were doing just with the general, you know, situation that's going on now, because obviously we, um, you know, we're dealing with a, a lot of racial inequality now, but, but we're also living in a pandemic. So um, you know, Malachi, how, how's everything been going for you since kind of school closed down and, um, and everything got started? With school being closed down and everything, I mean, first, everything happened just so abruptly that I was just honestly caught off guard um, with the season sort of just being cut short and school kind of just going to everything is online. Um, honestly, the one word to describe everything initially would just be weird. You know, it's weird being away from my teammates, weird, honestly, seeing my family for such a long period of time, something that I'm not used to. Um, that's honestly how I would describe it initially, like when we first, you know, went away from campus and uh, sort of had to start quarantining. Got it, got it, got it. Completely understand. How about you, Gable? Um, I think Malachi hit it on the dot. I think it's uh, it's crazy because this season got got cut short, and especially um, we were heading into the NCAA tournament. The wrestling national championship was coming up soon, and uh, we just got the the tour of the U.S. Bank Stadium where we're gonna wrestle at here in Minneapolis. And um, I think it's crazy that we just got a random call saying everything was cut short. Got to go home, and like he said, just I mean, being home is different than being at school and being with everyone that you know. And I think it's uh, I think it's real crazy that the times that we're in are just like you said, weird. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm sure it goes for both of you. Like you said, you know, um, not used to being around your family this much, especially when you've been out at college and you're an athlete and you're and you're on campus so much. So probably a little bit of a a blessing in disguise as well to be around the family a little bit, right? Right, for sure. Awesome. So um, to kind of get into the the topic that we're here to discuss, I mean, since everything has been you know has started, whether you know it was the murder of George Floyd and and, and all the protests that have been going on, you know. You know, Gable, what have been kind of your your initial thoughts, just kind of an overview of just how your how your mind state has been um, over these past several weeks as all this has kind of kind of begun? I mean, I think it's a little crazy for me, especially because I'm in the I'm in the city where it happened. It's like, like uh, about 10 minutes from campus, to be honest. And there's still there's still a big memorial up for him and like a bunch of paintings on the wall. Even on campus, people are protesting a lot. And I think um to so see, uh, see a lot of the, the college kids putting in their voice in, it's kind of crazy because normally we're just college kids on the side. And some people see us, see us as basketball players. Some people see us as just a wrestler. And I think um, in this time period, I think all of us had our voice and we were able to uh, express it, and especially going on. I think um, we're going to keep doing that in our certain type of way. Awesome. So, I mean, Malachi, you, you were in Atlanta for a while. Um, so how, how was that situation with you? Because obviously there's been a lot of um, a lot of activism going down in Atlanta, and 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 you guys are both kind of in in hot spots, you know, for for lack of a better word. How's how's it for you? I would say, I mean, initially when when the murder happened, it was just for me just extremely traumatizing. Um, everything ranging from you know news media to social media, you know, everything that I would see was just traumatizing. Like I actually had to just take a break from social media just to get away from it all because it just made me so upset um initially like I didn't understand how this could happen to this man um it was just hard for me to comprehend at first you know I try to think that the world is inherently good as much as I can and to just see something like this and then also you know subsequent events after it just 
again, continuously like angered me over and over and over again. Um, but, you know, something that was able to calm me down was a call that we had with our team where everyone, like Gabriel was saying, was able to express their feelings. And it was sort of a chance for us to kind of come together as a team as well. Um, but that's, I mean, that's really what I have to say about it, you know, initially when everything started going on. So, I mean, it's definitely kind of been, you know, I feel what you're saying. It almost kind of weighs on you, you know, and, and, you, and you feel it a lot, you know. So do you think you're at a point where, you know, you don't want to talk about it anymore? Um, obviously, a big part of the solution is having these types of conversations. So, you know, have you had a lot of people reach out to you? And, and when they do, you know, has it been, you know, tough to continuously talk about it over and over and over again? Um, or has it been something that's almost like therapeutic for you, Malachi? I actually love when people, you know, talk to me about it. Um, I think that's the solution to continue this awareness. This is something that we can't just let evaporate after, you know, two weeks or a month. This is something that we need to continue to talk about because it's still prevalent in society. It has been for a long time. It's just now these events are suddenly, you know, through social media and just, just the advancement of media in general are all of a sudden being publicized, but we know that this has been going on for a long time. And I feel like this is our opportunity to to make a significant stand and make a significant change. Um, so no, I, I welcome it. I welcome these types of conversations um, and I want them to continue to to go on and to proceed until we, we, you know, this problem starts to get resolved. But until then we need to keep having these types of conversations. Absolutely. What, what about you, Gabe? Um, to be honest, he hit it really hard. I think um, he mentioned the advancement of uh, social media. And I think um, with, with uh, what comes with talking about it comes with a lot of people that, that get backlash. And I think the whole, the whole point of social media is the both sides you got to be able to understand. I think uh, more people need to be able to open ears up instead of giving a opinion about everything. I think that's where a lot of people are getting stranded at. And um, just like that, like Malachi mentioned everything really well. I think um, we've been going through it for a while. And I think the time has come where we need to take a stand on things and especially um, moving forward, just keep, keep progressing with ourselves too. Absolutely. And I think one thing that you guys both kind of mentioned is social media and the news, have they kind of been hitting on it over and over again? And I think, you know, maybe some people feel like a lot of these things are maybe isolated incidents, um, but it, it's actually things that happen to us, you know, you know, often and not more often than it should. Um, do you know, we can start with you, Gable. Do you have any like experience, whether it be on campus or just, you know, with your family or, or, or even with police, really any experiences where that you can kind of share to talk about when you've been kind of been, you know, treated unfairly and it's just been, you know, based on, you know, the way that you look. Yeah, I've been in some spots where I've been treated uh, unfairly, especially um, last summer I was in a little thing that I was just, just that nobody should ever be in. But obviously, like, being with the athlete, it comes with uh, the spotlight that it comes with. And I think um, I was neg I was put in a negative spot for no reason. And um, just, the, just the way I had to go about things after that, you really have to see who's, who's your friend and who's really not your friend. And um, people can really go out their way and say and do anything to you just because the color of your skin and say what they want just because you're a different color than them. And I think, uh, like we both mentioned before, I think uh, people need to realize that there's there's both sides to the, both sides of things. I mean, white, there's whites and blacks, but I think at the end of the day, like I don't really see anybody as a color. Like if we're friends, we're friends. And I think uh, that's how it should be instead of seeing someone else as a, a different race. And obviously like, it goes a long way too, and it's just it's a lot to explain. But I just don't want to get too caught up in it. I completely understand, Malachi. What about you? Yeah, there's um one time that I remember vividly um, here in, Indiana in Indianapolis. I'm sorry, um, like around the corner from where I live is a Target. So I one day I rode my bike up there, uh, my friends and I, and we were inside the Target just looking around the CD section um, as really any normal teenager would do. Um, just checking out the new CDs, um, new video games. It's pretty much all in the same section in, in Target, um, kind of the layout that they have. So after doing that, um, we, as a group, decided to leave. And while we we're on our way out, a policeman came up and asked me to, to lift up my shirt. Um, 
for really no reason at all. I don't know why he thought I had been stealing CDs or had tucked CDs underneath my shirt, but he just asked me to lift it up. He wouldn't tell me why, I just said I fit a description. I said, okay, lifted up my shirt. Of course there was nothing there, but that just goes to show you that, you know, this is happening in our society and it's prevalent. Um, you know, thing, things like that, I just try, you know, not to pay too much attention to it. You know, obviously I'm aware, but just try not to get caught up into it too much. Um, you know, I've obviously had multiple discussions with my parents about it and how to behave in those types of situations. Um, you just try to comply as much as possible. And that's what I did. But, you know, it's definitely something that's haunted me since then. Um, just wondering why, you know, I was randomly selected to, mm -hmm. you know, lift up my shirt, but mm -hmm. crazy. And it seems like a lot of times it may, you know, it's not always as, you know, a big event where, you know, somebody is, is murdered by the by the police, but a lot of times it's, it's little things that you kind of deal with and that um, people may say, and, you know, you talked about how you're, you've had conversations with your family and that's just something that's kind of normal in, in the black community often is to talk to your kids about how they have to be a certain way um, you know, with police and have to carry themselves a certain way, um, you know, to maybe make yourself a little less threatening. I mean, Gable, did, have you ever had those conversations with, um, with your folks? Yeah, but I mean, I feel like every, every African Americans have that certain conversation with their folks. I mean, cause there's going to time, there's going to be a time where, um, you're on the street, just like Malachi said, and you're going to, cops going to look at you a different way. And I think you got to know how to comply in the right way and just be, and obviously, you can go on Instagram and see videos of guys complying and still get still get dropped on their backs for no reason. It's I think it, the world's a crazy place, man. It's just it's it's difficult to even talk about like what what we can see on the media now and what's not censored. And I think a lot of kids are used to seeing stuff like this now when it should not be like that. And it's just like I said, the world's a crazy place. And it, I hope it doesn't keep being too crazy. But as the years go go on, and hopefully all of us in here have a kid of some court some sort that they were they'll know what to do in these situations too. Yeah, completely agree. Matt Malachi, one thing I wanted to ask, you know, both of you guys is, you know, what was kind of the, I don't know if it's the right word, is the last straw, but what really kind of, um, whether it moved you, um, whether it just affected you some way that you felt like you had to get involved. And I know you've already started to get involved on campus, um, you know, with, uh, in respect to voting and, and that, and those kind of things. Can you kind of talk about like what kind of, struck that chord with you and then kind of what you did and how you got involved after that? Right. Um, I mean, honestly, there was no last straw for me. You know, uh, like I said, I've known that this has been going on for a while. You know, I'm a, a African-American myself, so I'm aware, like, I've gone through it myself. Um, so there, there wasn't really like a last straw for me. I've been, this is anger that I've been, you know, just pushing away for a long time. And really what allowed it to come out was this George Floyd murder. Um, I think just in the way that it happened, you know, him being killed like that in such a violent and disrespectful manner, just really, that's really what angered me the most. And then again, having that team call that I had with my team and having that platform to express my feelings um just to sort you sort of give context on what that call was like um i was most of my teammates were talking about going to protest um and our coach was just you know just wanting them to be safe and and things like that and i just wanted to make a comment about how voting is just a fundamental way we make change in this country mm -hmm. and to not forget about that part. I felt like it was contradictory and, and almost hypocritical to go protest and then not vote. You know, I feel like if you're gonna go protest, you also need to vote come fall or come time to vote. Um, so that's something that I really wanted to stress. I'm like, okay, I understand that everyone's emotions are at an all time high right now, but you know, we have to be rational. You know, we have to, in terms of how we're going to go about making change. So, you know, another thing that I want to stress through voting was that, okay, you know, this George Floyd case is a prime example of how local elections are just as important, you know, as the presidential election. So that's something else that I tried to stress on that call 
And then, of course, um, my assistant coach, Eric Reveno, and I had conversations after that sparked the all um, vote, no play initiative um, in which we're trying to push for a mandatory day off on election day. Of course, many people will have already voted by then, but it's just a symbolic representation. Um, and it's also, I, I think, a maturity thing. You know, I, I feel like a lot of athletes don't have the time to really, you know, know what's going on in the world. And um, I think this is a chance for the NCA to say, hey, like, you know, you're a maturing young man or woman, you need to know what's going on. And this is us, if, you know, giving you freedom to do so, so to speak. So that's, those were kind of just my thoughts on, on the whole matter. Um, and like Gabriel said, I hope, you know, through these talks and through these initiatives that are being started, that we can make this ultimate change. Absolutely. Gabriel, what about you? Was there was there something that really just kind of got you or really moved you? Or was it similar to, to, to Malachi, where it was just kind of just a, a buildup that had been going on just, just for a long time, just through your experiences? Um, I, I think mine was more of a, just like him, a buildup. And I think... Um, just past experience that I've been in and practically every other African-American's probably touched in some point in their life. It's just, um, just the, the constant buildup. I think it was about time to speak up. And I think I reached a plat reached a point in my platform where I think, um, it was necessary for me to just speak for the wrestling world, just because, um, wrestling, obviously everyone knows is predominantly a white sport. And, um, to see, to see a black, a black kid shine in a sport like that is kind of crazy. And I mean, I get a lot of, get a lot of hate for being being the one of the top guys out there but you got to expect the like I said expect both sides of the stories and um you got to understand what it's like to be be in my position and do what I can to reach my max potential especially on and off the wrestling mat absolutely and it just shows kind of that representation matters so you know maybe there'll be more black wrestlers as they see people like you you know being successful in their sport yeah. um kind of and, and then kind of in that same vein as people are looking up to people are there certain you know athletes um, that have been especially inspirational to you guys, as it seems like more and more athletes have felt comfortable, um, you know, speaking out and, and talking about what they think is right. Um, Gabe, we'll start with you. Um, I think it uh, it all started with uh, Kaepernick. I think um, Kaepernick really hit it on hit it on top, and I think um, a lot of people thought he was trying to disrespect the flag and disrespect America and all that. And I, it's it's not really about that, and obviously people thought he was disrespecting the troops, and it never hit that point because. I'm, I'm mixed, I'm biracial on my side, and my, my dad's side is white, and there's troops over there, too, that I give my highest respects to, and I think um, he's the one that hit it on point, and I think um, as the time went on, you see more guys like LeBron and other other high-end athletes out there showing their respects to this, and it's uh, it's crazy to see how many people have joined together and really and really have shown what the, the world is like, especially for youngsters out there that want to either wrestle or play basketball. They see the, they can see a way that you can you can get to that that point in your life that you can have that bigger platform and make a difference in your world too. Absolutely, Malachi. What about you? I would have to agree with Gable just on um, the significance of Colin Kaepernick um, and really the gesture that he made, um, just kneeling. And I feel like what a lot of people don't know is that you know this wasn't just an abrupt act by him. This is something that was well thought out and very deliberate. Um, like he had conversations with someone who was in the military. Hey, what's the best way, you know, to take a stand without, you know, disrespecting the troops? And with the feedback he got, he made the best, you know, gesture that he felt was necessary. So I feel like that's something that, you know, not a lot of people know about and goes to show, like Gable said, it's not about disrespecting the flag or the troops. That's not what it's about at all. Um, it's about standing up for equality. Um, it's about, you know, solidarity in the black community. You know, we're all going through something that's near and dear to us. Our lives are being taken. So, you know, this is something that's that's serious. And I applaud him, Colin Kaepernick, for taking that first step because I know, you know, you you see all the scrutiny that that he's gotten, you know, being blackballed from the NFL. But still, through all of that, maintaining his composure and still, you know, sticking up for the cause and and not being condemned at all, like it's 
it's amazing to see that just it's just very you know motivational for me you know ha now having this platform to kind of do the same thing or try to do the same thing or as much as I can and also like Gable said you know LeBron James is another another figure who's who's kind of doing the same thing I think he just started the the more than a vote um initiative really just targeting voter voter suppression so I think those two are two of the main ones that I I really think about when when asked that question thank you so so one other question this is kind of similar to probably something that cap went through when you know he, he first started you know protesting during the national anthem is you know having to have conversations with your teammates about why you're doing this and and, and how you feel about this stuff so um you know have you guys and, and we can start with uh, malachi on this one have you had any conversations with your teammates yet um you know and and kind of a um more than one point to this question. So also, if you have disagreements with your teammates, especially, you know, non-Black teammates, you know, um, how do you have these conversations, um, but at the same time remain a family? And and obviously you still, you know, you're a teammates and you got to perform together and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, how, how, how do you, how have you, or how do you plan um, to kind of go about those conversations? Right. I mean, um, most of my team is predominantly African-American. Um, we do have a few white people on the team, but they they pretty much they know what the deal is in terms of you know they stand with us and and mm -hmm. they understand the inequalities that we're going through um, and like you said we're a family so they're with us they they completely understand at least um, from my team perspective um, hypothetically if I were you know or if I did have a teammate who did disagree. I mean, all you can try and do is just give them perspective, you know, um, on what we're going through and really just try to lay it all out there for them. You know, I know it's definitely frustrating when you are explaining to someone and they're not quite getting it or they're not quite understanding or they're like really combative. Um, but if I were to have those types of discussions, I would just try again to just, you know, keep my composure, you know. The fact of the matter is not everybody is going to understand. Mm -hmm. we, but the, the goal is to try and and to convey this message and get as many people as we can to internalize what we're going through. That's the goal. Um, but for us, for me to say, hey, like it's possible to get everybody to change. I mean, right now that's kind of far fetched to me, you know, once, but just take it one step at a time. So that's what I would do if if I did have a teammate like that. Yep. Yep. And that and that and that's really it. You got to keep having those conversations. And I think the more and more these conversations become, because it seems like just recently this is when it's been more common for people to have these uncomfortable conversations. Right. And this is when people are starting to really kind of get educated on what's been going on. Right. Um, Gabe, you mentioned that you're in a predominantly white sport, so this is probably something that you have or will have to kind of you know deal with. Um, for a while. So how do you how do you plan to kind of go about this? I'm um, like uh like Malachi Benton, his team is mostly African American. I'm I'm the thick, I'm the only besides my brother, but he graduated this past year, I'm the only black on my team. Mm -hmm. So it's um it's kind of different than his situation. I think mine's more of a just trying to be a leader in all aspects that I can, especially athletically, academically, and what we're going through right now too. And I think um all of them understanding because I've been on a, I've been with them for a while now. A lot of them guys I've been on a team with for for years now. To be honest, before even we got to college, and uh, a lot of them understand what the deal is, just like Malachi said. And I think um, if one has a disagreement, I think just like he mentioned before, I think I'm just repeating what he said, kind of, but just showing them the way. And I think it's it's hard for a lot of people to understand what a what kind of privilege each side has, and it's um especially in wrestling, like I said, it's uh, it's more whites than blacks. And I think uh, teaching them the way is the best thing that you can. And if they don't understand it, then we got to keep moving forward in, in my own way and just try to grab as many people that I, that I can. So so let me kind of follow up with this. Um, you know, would you encourage, and this can go for your teammates or, or really just any kind of athletes who are, who are white that have black teammates, would you encourage them to come and talk to you about this, even though it's not uncomfortable or maybe if it's not you know, something that they feel comfortable talking about with you, maybe somebody else who has similar experiences, do you encourage them to come 
you know, come talk to you or how, how should they kind of go about it if they want to speak to you about kind of what's going on and they want to educate themselves? I think a, a lot of times we're always together and I think it can be brought up at any point. I think um, this is a major topic of discussion and I believe that I'm always open to talk and if they can't talk to me, there's many people on the university that they can holler at that, um, that brings a, a perspective of their own and obviously I'm on the team with them so I'd hope they would step forward and come to me and I, I would be it would be grateful. I'll be grateful enough to let them know how how it is. And so, yeah. Absolutely. Malachi, would you say the same? Yeah, I would definitely have to second that. Um, again, I would I would welcome these types of conversation. It shows that, you know, if a Caucasian came, person came to me and, and wanted to have that type of conversation, um, it shows me that they're, they want to be educated. They want to know where I'm coming from. They want to hear my perspective, our perspective. Um, and honestly, I would I would welcome that. I would love that. Awesome, awesome. So kind of going away from 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 just on campus stuff for a second. I mean, I um, mean, you can kind of see it now. Um, the mainstream kind of appeal and, and the coverage of the protests and, and the movement and what's going on is starting to decrease. You know, it's not all over CNN and and, and all that stuff anymore. Um, people's Social media timelines are going back to normal where you don't see probably as much about, you know, these racial injustices that you were um, a few weeks ago. So, I mean, how do you think that athletes specifically can kind of continue to make this a conversation and, and prevent this from kind of falling to the wayside um, so that way, you know, we can really try to make some some permanent change here? Um, let's start with you, Malka. Yeah. Um, I mean, from a social media standpoint, I just think, you know, something as simple as continuing to post, um, continuing to spread awareness. I think a lot of even college athletes have, you know, a huge platform, um, especially in basketball, you know, at a lot of different universities. Um, you're talking about kids who have thousands and thousands of followers on Instagram and Twitter and what have you. Um, I think you know, something as simple as them just continuing to post and not, you know, letting this evaporate, so to speak, and just keeping this thing going, um, keeping this, these types of conversations, you know, prevalent on people's minds, I think is what needs to be done right now. You know, there's definitely people who are, you know, higher up, so to speak, that are also, you know, fighting you know, doing the dirty work that we're not, you know, we may not see every day or through social media, you know, someone like LeBron James, who's doing the, the more than a vote act, you know, for voter suppression, you know, people with a little, that have some more resources, but for us, like people who have, you know, a huge platform, maybe not as many resources, you know, to operate with, I think just something as simple as continuing to spread awareness is, is something that would be extremely effective. Yeah, absolutely. Gabe, what do you think? Um, I, I think the main thing we'll see is throughout uh, all sports, especially pro and college, I think we'll see a lot of people start taking a knee. I've seen um, J.J. Watt, I think, put something out. Kyler Murray put something out that they probably would. And, I mean, the the amount of people that we're going to see, well, it'll. I think the, you mentioned the media part and how, how it's kind of be, being uh, dragged down with Corona coming back on the media and stuff like that. I think um, right when right when seasons get back going, I think um, it's gonna it's gonna skyrocket again because you're gonna see all these you're gonna see a lot of big athletes with millions of followers. Just like he mentioned, especially college athletes out there, they're gonna one of them's gonna take a knee and it's gonna it's gonna be a chain and it's just gonna resurface after that. Gotcha. Thank you. What would you if you guys could you know Gabe? I'll start with you. Um, if you could just say a few words to you know your student body about what they can do just to support not only black athletes but um, you know, their, their fellow black students and, and just everyone, you know, what are what are some ways that that you would encourage them to to support or be a part of the solution? I think um, I seen I actually saw some yesterday on Twitter that uh, that African-American woman from Minnesota, she was on the news for being a student body something. I don't know what her name is, but shout out to her. She's doing her thing. Of course, it's like we're trying to. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I think um, I saw I saw a couple of Iowa football players that mentioned um that meant and if uh, you're not going to be there with us on the field, no, you're not going to be there with us outside the field, don't be there with us on the field, and that they would rather play with 1,000 people that are loyal to them instead of 50,000, 49,000 plus 1,000 for 50 that are just want to be there because they play football. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, 
that's a big thing just because as people, a lot of people don't know that we have a life outside of our, uh, out of our, outside of our sports. And people just think that I go, I wake up, go wrestle for 23 hours. Then all of a sudden I go to sleep for an hour then do it again. And I think uh, people don't realize that I actually, I actually like, I do stuff outside my day. I go to the mall, I hang out with my friends and people need to start realizing that we're humans too. And that we have, we have hearts and hearts. We have hearts too. Sorry. Absolutely. It kind of goes to what, you know, LeBron says with, with the whole more, more than an athlete platform, you know, that, you know, it's more than just what you do on the field. You know, they have to respect this people too. Yeah. Um, what about you, Malachi? What do you think? Um, yeah, something that I would stress to my student body um, is really echoing something that I saw uh, Jalen Brown from the Boston Celtics say. Um, at this point in time, you know, if you see racism going on and you don't speak up, you're a part of the problem. You know, all those, you know, something as little as, you know, microaggressions or or um, even something like that. You know, we cannot let that slide anymore. That is no longer tolerable at all. You know, if you see racism going on on campus or um, just anywhere, it, it is no longer acceptable to not say anything. It, and it's no longer acceptable if you're the one, you know, being pressed to just do nothing. Um, it, that's just what I would stress in my student body. If it, it's just no longer acceptable to to be a, a bystander. Gotcha. So what about your university? Um, whether it be your administrators in the athletic department or just um, you know the professors, you know anybody who's working there. Um, how do you think that they can support? Um, you know, their, their students, you know, during this time and once you guys get back on campus, which is hopefully soon? Um, I mean, what I would suggest to them is kind of to just let us, you know, whether that be, like Gabriel said, to, to kneel f for the national anthem or, um, or something of that nature, to just let it, give us that platform, you know, let us, you know, kind of express our emotions and our feelings. Um, I feel like all I'm asking, all I would ask from the administration or the professors is just for them to respect that. Thank you. What about you, Gabe? Um, yeah, just uh, disrespect what we do on and off the mat, especially the, the kneeling part, as you'll, you'll see a lot of people get into it. But I think um, our administrators and uh, our president actually, actually gave a statement to us in an email, and especially our athletic director gave something out. And I think... Um, I think the even the president got rid of the Minneapolis PD for matches and football games and stuff. So I don't know how that's physically going to work, but I think um, that's a big step. Just because what with the I'm not saying all all police officers are bad, but what with that a uh, certain situation happened with those few police officers kind of is real dreadful. But I know not all cops are bad. Just um and yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So kind of in the same vein, and it may be a similar answer, but what about the NCA? Um, as an organization or during the championships that they run, whether it be, you know, the wrestling championship, whether it be NCA tournament, NIT tournament, all that kind of stuff. I mean, what could what could the NCA do to to kind of su support you guys? Because obviously, you know, you got we are our, our, the NCA is made up of its member institutions and its student athletes and NCA is nothing without you. So what, what would you say um, the NCA could potentially do? Well, I think the NCA has already you know, taking one step by, I think, I don't know maybe the specifics of the matter, but I think they said something about, in terms of basketball, not having the final four in, you know, anywhere where Confederacy is commercialized um, for, I think somewhere along those lines was uh, what they came out with. So they're already taking the right steps. That's something that I, I saw and, and, you know, put a smile on my face to see that. And again, like I said before, in addition to that, just, you know, respecting our peaceful protests, you know, if they happen. Not mm -hmm. really if, when, to be honest, um, when they happen. Got you. What about you, Gable? Um, I, I also saw, um, I think it's the, the Big East that had, um, they got to wear the Black Lives Matter on their jerseys now. I'm not sure what conference it is, but I, I, I saw East. it recently. It's Big East? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean that's a that's a big step right there, to be honest. And hopefully, um, maybe all the conf conferences can wear can wear what they need to wear, especially with the Black Lives Matter thing. And um, just Malachi kind of hit on the point. I don't want to be repetitive, so sorry. 
It's all right. It's all right. That's great. I mean, I, I think that that's really important. And that kind of continues the conversation that we talked about, because seeing that patch or the removal of the Confederate flag are things that will remind you of the progress that we're trying to continually make and how important it is. Um, so I got one more one more question for you guys. Um, obviously, there's been, you know, different movements throughout history um, for our people as, you know, as, as the journey kind of goes forward for, for equality. Um, do you think, and, and, I, and we'll start with, with Gable, do you think that this movement will be different, you know, considering how long their protests were going on now compared to protests in the past? Do you think there will be more change that comes from this now? Um, and do you think, you know, maybe for our next generation, it'll put them in a position where there is true equality? Um, do, do you feel like it's, it'll be, this is, does this feel different to you? Yeah, it feels a lot different. Normally, um, especially here in Minneapolis, normally protests probably go for like a day or two. This probably went off for like a few weeks. And besides the the riots, and I don't think the, the riots should have uh, went on for that long, but I think um, a lot of things can, a lot of things are going to go good and bad. I hope um, for future generations that they understand what it's like to especially like African-American kids they understand what it's like to be in situations and I hope they don't have to, to go through any of that. But at the end of the day, um, everyone's pushing to make a, to make a great change in this. And it's uh, it's cool to see everyone come together and agree on, uh, agree on a lot of things. And obviously you're going to have uh, people that won't agree on all of it. And that's, uh, that's okay. We're going to move forward. And most of the country believes in this firmly. And I think um, change is going to happen soon. Absolutely. Great point. Malachi, do you think this time is going to be different and why or why not? I think this time will be different. I think for a few reasons. Again, just, you know, I think everybody's gone through that buildup of just anger. And I think we finally just hit the tipping point. I think that's one reason um, that, you know, like I said, this, this is it. We'll no longer, you know, let this slide. This is us taking a stand, like a, a significant stand. You know, we will not stop until you give us our equality, you know, we'll, we'll go to whatever ends are needed in order to do so. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of, you know, I mean, I don't want to be too literal by, by saying what I just said, but um, I think people understand what I meant. But I, I, another reason I think this is, this time is different is because um, just the younger demographic, um, just looking at this next generation, me included, coming up, I think we're different mm -hmm. um, than than the generations before us. Um, I think we are more cognizant of of equality and of treating everybody fairly. Um, and I think just those types of attributes that this younger demographic has, um, I think, will lead to change coming in the future. I would like to, I'll kind of like to put my last input on that. And he hit it greatly, but I think um, I saw this on my, one of my friends snap story and I'm on it right now. And I hope, uh, I mean, it's Snapchat. So obviously, obviously not every group, but um, it said in Luke 15, I was like, there's, these are a hundred sheep, but not one goes missing. And it's like a quote, but Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one, the 99, but what about us? Don't we matter? And he said, of course, the 99 still matter, but they're not the one in danger. And uh, right now we're the ones in danger. And that's for our, a lot of people saying all lives matter. And I think that hit it real good because the 99 is the all lives and the one is us that are in danger. And I think it really needs to be just the black lives matter instead of all lives matter at this point, just because like I just mentioned, the 99 and the one, the one of us, the one blacks are in danger, the rest aren't. As I couldn't have said it better myself. That that is great. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Um, thank you both, you know, for, for agreeing to be on this. Um, I think you know this is what's going to help kind of bring us closer to to our goal, and and especially giving you guys you know um, platforms to be able to talk about how you guys feel and and, and what you're going through. I think this is um, really educational and really helpful. You know, so I just want to thank you guys and, and and appreciate you guys for being part of the solution. And uh, I wish you guys the best of luck for next year. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. I really enjoy this. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Appreciate y'all having us. Appreciate you guys.